Chapter Five of Book Seven of Les Misérables, Volume Two, by Victor Hugo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ruth Golding. Les Misérables, Volume Two, by Victor Hugo. Translated by Isabel Florence Hapgood. Book Seventh, Parenthesis, Chapter Five, Prayer. They pray. To whom? To God. To pray to God. What is the meaning of these words? Is there an infinite beyond us? Is that infinite there, inherent, permanent, necessarily substantial, since it is infinite? and because, if it lacked matter, it would be bounded. Necessarily intelligent, since it is infinite, and because, if it lacked intelligence, it would end there? Does this infinite awaken in us the idea of essence, while we can attribute to ourselves only the idea of existence? In other terms, is it not the absolute, of which we are only the relative. At the same time that there is an infinite without us, is there not an infinite within us? Are not those two infinites, what an alarming plural, superposed, the one upon the other? Is not this second infinite, so to speak, subjacent to the first? Is it not the latter's mirror, reflection, echo, an abyss which is concentric with another abyss. Is this second infinity intelligent also? Does it think? Does it love? Does it will? If these two infinities are intelligent, each of them has a will principle, and there is an I in the upper infinity as there is an I in the lower infinity. The eye below is the soul, the eye on high is God. To place the infinity here below in contact, by the medium of thought, with the infinity on high, is called praying. Let us take nothing from the human mind. To suppress is bad. We must reform and transform. Certain faculties in man are directed towards the unknown, thought, reverie, prayer. The unknown is an ocean. What is conscience? It is the compass of the unknown. Thought, reverie, prayer, these are great and mysterious radiations. Let us respect them. Whither go these majestic irradiations of the soul? Into the shadow, that is to say, to the light. The grandeur of democracy is to disown nothing and to deny nothing of humanity. Close to the right of the man, beside it, at the least, there exists the right of the soul. To crush fanaticism and to venerate the infinite, such is the law. Let us not confine ourselves to prostrating ourselves before the tree of creation, and to the contemplation of its branches full of stars. We have a duty to labour over the human soul, to defend the mystery against the miracle, to adore the incomprehensible and reject the absurd, to admit, as an inexplicable fact, only what is necessary, to purify belief, to remove superstitions from above religion, to clear God of caterpillars. End of Book Seventh, Chapter Five Recording by Ruth Golding